Welcome back to another live segment of GCSAA TV Live at the 2018 Golf Industry Show in San Antonio, Texas, presented in partnership with Lebanon Turf. I'm Scott Cavelli, a uh, correspondent for GCSAA TV, and I'm joined by two gentlemen, um, both from uh, Schiller Grounds Care, uh, Matt Donahue representing Steiner, and Barry Larson uh, representing Ryan. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks. So, um, so first, Matt, we're going to start talking about uh, Steiner. Um, it's not it's not your average tractor. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about Steiner, the company, and and uh, and, and kind of how it uh, relates to to golf courses sure. and superintendents. Yeah, it really is a, a, an integral piece to what we're doing here this week. Um, with the slope mowing part that we're going to mm -hmm. talk about here in a little bit, but Steiner as a company has been around for over 50 years, mm -hmm. and it's it's a very unique product as you mentioned, in that it's a oscillating and a articulating subcompact tractor. There's really nothing else like it in the world, and it allows the users to uh, do so many different jobs and, and features um, around properties and maintaining things. It's especially helpful in golf courses where they can use one tool to do many things as opposed to buying a lot of specialty equipment for individual jobs. Yeah, that's great. And specifically slope mowing, right? Because it's, it's, a, it's a piece of equipment that in many cases, in specific applications, you, you can only really use that kind of machine in order to mow certain slopes and to get in certain areas where other machines can't. Right? Exactly, when mm -hmm. it comes to slope mowing, there's a lot of things to consider. You know, uh, safety being number one, mm -hmm. and, and so when golf courses especially are, are looking for equipment to manage the slopes that they have on their courses, um, they, they have a lot of things to consider. You know, mm -hmm. in, in uh, flat areas, you know, zero turn mowers are, are typically uh, what's used in, in a lot of areas. Uh, but with, with the typical zero turn mower, there's no way to uh, hold a hill up to uh, 30 degrees, which is what a Steiner uh, can do in, uh, in that situation with uh, properly equipped with, with the right uh, wheel setup and, and all that. Uh, however, the big thing is to, to be able to safely uh, manage those slopes uh, mm -hmm. with that type of equipment. Uh, other things like robotic mowers are, are out there that, that can be used as well. They do a great job, but at the end of the day, you're, you're spending a lot of money for a product that really only does one thing for you. So, yeah. whereas the Steiner does such a good job, for example, on, on those type of conditions, you can also do other things besides mowing. So that's what makes it so great for that yeah. situation. And describe how it feels, because I've, I've, I've been on the machine, and it's, it's a really unique feeling, especially the oscillating, art, articulating uh, setup when you're sitting on it, especially on, people don't realize 30 degrees is really steep. Like, it's, it doesn't sound steep, but it's very, very steep. Right? Yeah, 30 degrees is almost uh, so steep that you can barely stand on it, let alone operate equipment. And so uh, having that stability of that machine, uh, it's so low, low to the ground, uh, center of gravity, mm -hmm. and having the extended wheelbase option really helps the, the driver feel secure uh, mm -hmm. to be able to, to maintain contact with the ground and get a good, uh, nice finished cut uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, that's great. And uh, uh, what's something, what's like a specific application that you might think of for a, um, a superintendent to, to have a slope like that that they need to mow? Maybe like on push up greens or something like that where, um, you know. Yeah, you there's a really specific... a variety of, of, mm -hmm. of applications. I've seen things from what you're talking about with the, with the greens and the, and the steep inclines leading up. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also seen other areas on the course uh, surrounding in, in the rough areas uh, mm -hmm. that need to be maintained. Uh, it, either either of those situations, there's uh, different mowing um, capabilities, whether it's for uh, finish mowing with something like a flex deck mm -hmm. that we have, or something uh, like rough areas with larger uh, areas and larger diameter material that you need to get through, uh, tall areas with, with like a rough cut mower. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different options, but you know, if it can be dreamed up, uh, mm -hmm. the, these golf course designers will do it, and, and the Steiner can handle everything they throw at it. Yeah. So going back to safety, like you were saying before, so as a, when an operator is, is you know, mowing a slope, and you know, like you said, it can be a, a dangerous situation, uh, what, what would an operator need to know um, when they're mowing in a situation like that? First of all, we would say, it, Take a test pass. You know, don't mm -hmm. don't don't try to get at it all in, in the, the first run. Mm -hmm. So go. You can try going up the slope uh, vertically, uh, as well as trying it. You know, horizontally to try to see where where you are with in regard to uh, traction and stability. And you know, it, it's really about feel. 
But in addition to that, there's also tools like slope meters that we offer and, and other companies do as well to actually give you a, a legitimate uh, slope rating uh, if you're looking for that peace of mind to know. But always try it out before you, you just go in full bore. Yeah. That's a great piece of advice. And so, but not just mowing, right? You said this is a really versatile machine. Um, what other kind of applications could a, a Steiner tractor help a superintendent with on their course? Yeah, on a golf course, there's a lot of different uh, opportunities for, for application. Uh, one of those also being a sweeper. So mm -hmm. I, I, a lot of courses will use the, the sweeper in the front to clear uh, cart paths. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a turbine blower to help blow off the uh, fairways, is, is especially in, in the fall when the leaves start to come down. Mm -hmm. uh, many will use that in, in the mornings to, to clear all that off before players get out on the course. Uh, and then there's things like a stump grinder. So when you're taking trees down or, or trees come down after storms, we have, we have all the tools to finish up the job and, and make the course playable. Yeah, that's great. And the, uh, the 450 was something that you kind of debuted here last year. Um, what's something specific to, to that machine that, so like, you know, when we say, oh, it's something that's like, but you know, it's, it's un it can uniquely handle mowing slopes. So like, what is it about the machine that can, you know, so allow it, it to do that? Yeah, in mm -hmm. addition to the low center of gravity and, and the uh, stability is a, a feature that's unique to us that we call a hydraulic weight transfer. Mm -hmm. And so when you're operating attachments that are really heavy out front, uh, naturally, when you go up a hill, the machine wants to pull itself down the hill, uh, and, and a result of that sometimes is what's called crabbing, where mm -hmm. the, the tractor and the attachment uh, start to slide a little. Mm -hmm. Well, with the hydraulic weight transfer, you can uh, take some of the weight off of that implement and put it back onto the tractor to create more stability and to do that on the fly uh, through the use of hydraulics. It, it makes it so much easier and user-friendly and safe for the operator, and they don't have to get off of the machine to make any adjustments. Yeah. That's great. Um, well, thanks, Matt. Um, I think moving on to uh, to Ryan. Um, we uh, so why don't you Barry? Why don't you start and tell us a little bit about Ryan as a company, and and then we'll kind of get into the um, specifics on times. Well, Ryan is part of the Schiller mm -hmm. uh, Grounds Care Company. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan introduced itself back in 1945 mm -hmm. with the sod cutter, the junior sod cutter mm -hmm. that today is used legendary. on numerous. Yeah. Legendary <laughs> is correct. <laughs> yeah, um, mm -hmm. been built in the USA ever since. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, you know, Ryan is continued to partner and be a part of the golf industry uh, mm -hmm. to help maintain a healthier turf for the golf courses and the superintendents. And I think specifically, people have to start looking at, you know, not only the pieces of equipment, but some of the tines, and specifically, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about tines 101 today, and the mm -hmm. different uh, types of tines that are available uh, to the superintendents today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so obviously, superintendents are familiar with uh, aerating. Mm -hmm. Most of them aerate uh, once a year, and many of them more than that. Sure. Um, so, but what you're saying is it's not just, you know, one time fits all, so to speak. There's it's, lots of different times and, and, you know, reasons for them. At, mm -hmm. Over the years, it's really evolved. Uh, used to be a coring time. Everybody would pull holes mm -hmm. out of their greens or their fairways. Mm -hmm. But over time, things have evolved where we have coring tines, both hollow and side eject. And then what's really transformed is a lot of the solid tines. Everything from a, a needle tine all the way up to a, a larger diameter. So. When you look at the tine selection themselves, we have varying uh, diameters, uh, both in the coring and the uh, in the uh, uh, solids, and then we also have different lengths. Mm -hmm. And and not to be forgotten, there's also spoon tines. So mm -hmm. there's a different time for different applications. Uh, we concentrate on green surfaces, but uh, there's different times for the fairways, for the rough applications. So. It's, picked, mm -hmm. it's choosing the right one. Yeah, so I, I guess going right into that, right? So how do you, depending on the application, how are you, how should you go about finding which tine is right for your application? Right. Like a, a, you know, a coring one versus right, a right. solid I think, one. I mm -hmm. think today a lot of it has to do with the superintendent and what they're trying to achieve on their, either their tees, greens, or fairways. If we're specifically talking about greens, are they looking at changing the soil structure? With that, they may use a coring tine, a hollow coring tine where they're physically pulling soil out of the ground and, and either A, um, reintroducing it back in by dragging or removing it, 
with the core remover equipment that's out there, mm -hmm. um, and then replacing it with their uh, sand soil you know, mixture that they have specifically for their greens. So we can look at that with the hollow tine um, two different ways. If we're looking at reducing some compacted areas or we're looking at less disruption on the green surface, we can look at solid tines. Uh, mm -hmm. from, the, from the small pencil needle type tines uh, to the more you know, deep tine. And the, the, the pencil needle tines are more used if we're gonna have some surface compaction areas. We have maybe some standing water issues. We're not getting the infiltration rate we're looking for. So they can go needle tine their greens, mm -hmm. mow them, and you're not disrupting play at all. Yeah. If we're really looking at going in and Doing a doing a, a, a core, uh, pulling a core. Usually mm -hmm. the course is shut down that day, so yeah. we're disrupting the membership, and so there's varying degrees with that. Um, so the needle tines usually are anywhere from you know three to five to six inches you can get down with, mm -hmm. and then we can go into the larger solid tines, the deep tines, mm -hmm. if we've created a. Um, a layer down there, a hard pan layer that we want to get down through and penetrate. Mm -hmm. So there's varying degrees of it um, for the green surfaces themselves. Mm -hmm. We can also take that out into the fairways. We create hard pan areas out on the fairways. The sure. deep time aerification has become very popular. Mm -hmm. There's different brands of machines out there um, that'll actually you know kick if you need to on the bottom to mm -hmm. alleviate some more. Um, and then also the coring tines out on the fairways. Usually when we're coring, um, we're gonna use the side eject tines out there and uh, we're gonna drag that material back into the soil to help with water infiltration, oxygen movement, and the, you know, helping the soil structure itself. Yeah. So you were talking about you have some of the more shallow tines versus mm -hmm. the deep tines. Mm -hmm. how, are you, how do you determine you know, how deep you want to go into the turf? Well, I think it all depends on the application that we're looking at. If we're looking at just going down, you know, we want to make sure we penetrate if there is a thatch layer, okay? Mm -hmm. On the green surfaces, you know, our thatch layer may not be as much and hopefully there's not much at all. So there we're looking at going down three, four inches, two and a half, it all depends on the situation. On the fairways, it all can be dependent on the variety of grasses we are using out there. Some of them build up thatch more than others. So it's making sure we penetrate that thatch layer. A lot of, can, a lot of use can be pulling out a core, looking at our structure before we start um, mm -hmm. air flying uh, to see what we're dealing with and mm -hmm. picking the correct time then. So it isn't just a one fix for all. And I think that's why there's multiple amounts of times yeah. So yeah, that's great. And uh, so, I would be remiss if I, uh, you know, we were. You mentioned it before about the junior sod cutter, the legendary junior sod cutter. Right. Right. Pretty, pretty much every superintendent has one, um, and if they don't, they should. Um, so I, I hear that you're giving away a junior sod cutter at your booth. Is that right? We are. We are. Mm -hmm. um, we are giving away a junior sod cutter, and what we're asking people mm -hmm. to do is. Log on to ryanturf.com slash sod cutter giveaway. Mm -hmm. Take a picture of your sod cutter and send it in. And uh, we'll put your name in the hat uh, for the drawing. Mm -hmm. If you send in a little story along with it, we will mm -hmm. actually uh, put your name in twice. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a lot of people out there that have stopped by the booth already and say, mm -hmm. I've had one of these for over 30 years. Yeah. And uh, trust me, I've seen old ones out in mm -hmm. the field and yeah. they're bulletproof. And, yeah. uh, we have the newest model in there today, and you know, please stop by our booth, and yeah. we'll show it to you. And if you know, go on to RyanTurf.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter, also. Yeah. So, what do you think it is about that, though? When you know, people come up to you and they say, "I've had this for 30 years." What is it about the junior sod cutter that's so, you know, it makes it so durable? I think yeah. when the people started, when they re-engineered it back in 1946 or 47. Mm -hmm. They got it right. It's the mm -hmm. guts of the machine, and the guts yeah. of the machine have stayed the same for the last 70 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I just think the design that came out with the machine was a mm -hmm. flawless design. Yeah. We've improved it with the rear seal steering wheel, so mm -hmm. it makes it easier to follow flower beds around, or if we're doing you know, some contouring with yeah. cutting out the side. Uh, we're always trying to improve the ease of use a little mm -hmm. bit. But uh, no, it's just been a very bulletproof machine.
Yeah, that's great. Um, and you can see the newest iteration of it at the um, Ryan and Steiner booth um, at the, on the show floor. Um, for those of you that are here and uh, want to check it out, um, what was the, the booth number did you say? 20087. Yeah, 20087. Um, so Matt, Barry, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us here on the GCSA TV live stage. Thanks for having us, Scott. I appreciate you joining us. Thanks, um, Scott. And actually, right now, we're going to go and uh, learn a little bit more about um, Ryan in, uh, in a little video for GCSA TV um, on Times 101. Um, and then we'll be back with our next live segment after that. Um, I'm Scott Cavelli. This is GCSAA TV Live at the 2018 Golf Industry Show in San Antonio, Texas, presented in partnership with Lebanon Turf. Thanks.